Hi, hi, retro computing fans. Welcome back to last video for 64 month. This one was not quite how I wanted to originally do it, but at long last, I've really wanted to tackle a, a proper look at the Ultimate 2 Plus. Um, I'm very much of the opinion that if you're a serious 64 enthusiast in 2017, you should be rocking one of these, no matter what anyone says. And I think that there is a lot of, there's not a lot of good talking about why it is that this is such a very versatile device and so important. I originally had wanted to do it as a scripted piece that I ran out of time. So I'm going to sit down and do a good walkthrough of it, particularly aimed at a games playing angle. There's a lot of advanced features it has, but depending on what you what your thoughts are, whether or not I do a second video covering those is probably something you've been on. A bit for, for future discussion. Anyway, so quick little bit of history the ultimate 2 plus is of course the successor to the 1541 ultimate 2 the 1541 is dropped by, from the title simply because it's actually more than just a disk drive emulator um the ultimate that's the sort of main selling point that it emulates the low level behavior of the 1541 that's simply important because if you you without getting too technical um the slow bus speed in the on the 1541 is because of some legacy compatibility with the with hardware flaws in the vic and the 1541 was a downgraded 1540 to be compatible with the 64. And of course that means that it inherited the slow speed, even though the 64 doesn't have the hardware bug. Us 64 fans got used to, to rad things like uh, turbo loading and IRQs that IRQ loading that sort of made the experience a little nicer. So you've got a little cartridge plugs in the back that gives you that. It of course can run cartridge images, whether those are classic CBM ones or 64 GS games. Hey, it's like what I talked about in the last couple of weeks. Or homebrew games. It does offer read-only support for Easy Flash games, so you can't play the likes of Ultima 4 uh, Remastered. But you can run that off disc, so... And of course, there's the tape adapter, which is a little option that lets you connect the data setup. So what I think we'll do is we'll run through the device. Uh, you've seen 64 powered up. By default, you get Retro Replay installed as the sort of resident cartridge image. So I'm going to hit the menu button. And we've got it up. Um... The Ultimate 2, of course, used uh, primarily used a micro SD card for storage, but it had one USB port that you connect mass storage device to. The Ultimate 2 Plus actually features two USB ports for this. So for me, it's a big benefit because I can quickly pull it out, plug it into my MacBook when I copy new games for, for covering on the channel. Anyway, so you've got your boot menu up. Um, the network address, so the Ultimate 2 Plus adds an Ethernet adapter. With the Ultimate 2, you can buy a USB um, dongle for that, but it lets you FTP and Telnet that's some of the advanced stuff I'd probably want to talk about in a second video. Anyway, now this interface is all driven through uh, keyboard or joystick in port two. One of the features I love most of all is that it's got type ahead capability. So let's load a tape game. So I'll type, so I've just typed tapes in and you've just seen the highlight go straight down to tapes. Hit enter, or you can use right arrow without the menu. So let's pick a Let's go Arkanoid. So we'll load Arkanoid up. So again, you just press return and you got your options here. Um, run tape does what it says on the box. Star tape is for if you want to play a game that's like flipped over to side B. So you've got like you load the game on side A, flip it to side B and play that. Write to tape actually lets you write the tap file to your C64. Um, to a, you plug a data up and you can actually write to a blank cassette, rename and delete self expression So let's click run. C64 rebooted, it did the equivalent of a shift run stop, and now it's ticking away. So let's watch what happens here as we'll just go through. We'll get the found prompt like we're loading the original cassette. And you see, we've got found Arkanoid, so I hit Commodore key to let it tick over. And then we'll start seeing it do its thing. You know, this is this is you know, tap files are like low level dumps of the 64 cassettes. So you're going to get the loaders, you're going to get the mini games, you know, you can run a Mastertronic game and get a uh, Invader load or load and play. You know, I've got the initial loading lines now, as you'd expect. And you can sort of see, you know, if you want to sit back and enjoy this experience. And honestly, um, despite having, you know, flash storage available, this is something I like. I mean, I, I've spoken about in the past with the channel when it comes to reviewing. I like reviewing games from the original um, tape or disc images because there's just little subtle things that are different. You can hear the ocean loader kicking in and it's drawing the Arkanoid picture. So this is pretty much what it's actually like. It's acting like, you know, I have a data set plugged up and it's 
running Arkanoid as it would be off the actual cassette. Pretty cool little experience, so it's pretty much what you expect, you know. Now, it depends, you know, there's a lot of people who will always say tape games took forever to load, and the average game's like five minutes. I don't know about you, modern life is already busy and hectic enough as is, and I actually like sitting there waiting for it to load. But for the sake of things, um, you know, the Arkham pictures come up, I'm actually going to do a cut, and we'll see, you know, we'll wait, jump forward a few minutes, and we'll see it load. We've almost loaded Arkanoid, it's just this last little stretch. And that's sort of, you know, it's sort of the experience. Um, you know, like I said, I, I like having it. It's the digis. Um, yeah, I like having that experience, you know. Joystick. We're playing some Arkanoid. I mean, of course, you know, and I'm sure you're gonna say, but I don't wanna sit down and wait through five minutes of tape load. And that is, that is perfectly legitimate thing to say. You know, that is perfectly legitimate thing to say. So, I mean, yeah, let's play some Arkanoid. And that's okay. So we hit the menu button. And what we can do is this is sort of where the real power comes in. So if we go discs, let's pick. Um, let's try, I'm just going to try and randomly pick, try and think of something that's got um, darkness. So this is the disc image for darkness, which I looked at forever ago on the channel. And it's just your normal D64 disc image. So you, one of the things you can do with disc images is if you click the fire button or press return, you've got mount disc, which which is pretty much um, mount disc is like just inserting the disc. Doesn't do anything, it just inserts it. It's useful for, you know, if you're playing a, di a, a game where you want to put side B in or, or, or something. Run disc is important because that's the equivalent of putting the disc in, hitting reset and manually typing load quote star quote comma eight comma one. Or read only, self-explanatory. Unlinked, I think that lets it just load into memory but it won't write any changes back to the actual disc image. Then you've got B. Uh, the ultimate can actually emulate two 1541s um, depending on the firmware. The default, the other firmware is, gives you a bunch of SID emulation or you can have two drives. The latter is far more useful for me so I use that. And you can view rename it. So, okay. So let's go to darkness. So we'll go right, push right in the joystick. We've got the directory listing. Now it hides all those sort of those separated directory entries that are just like graphic characters and stuff. So we've got the darkness game, little bonus stuff on there. So click the fire button. And here are our options. Run, loads into memory, load. Memory serves just um, loads it, but doesn't automatically execute it. DMA just loads it into memory. It doesn't do anything with it. It's sort of uh, transfery stuff. Mountain run is the equivalent of is the equivalent of mounting the disk image, running that program, and it's like automatically resetting and loading. So let's go mountain run. It's reset, it's loaded it. And there you go. Um, in, in essence, it's, it's running a lot faster and it doesn't have, you don't have to sit through it. So, you know, the slow, it mitigates the pain of the slow disk access because you can sit there and let it just breeze through like that. You know, we've got the intro for darkness up and we didn't have to wait. And of course, you know, if you want to play something that um, is, you know, the other big thing with the ultimate is you can run protected uh, G64 disc images, which are dumps of protected, uh, protected games. So let's go something here. Um, something here. First one I can find, David's Midnight Magic. So we click and we've got run disk. Unlike a D64, you actually can't view the directory catalog here. So we click run disk. The C64 resets, mounts the David's Midnight Magic disk, and now it's loading. And this is exactly as it would be like if you had the physical disk in a physical 1541 and booted it yourself. It gives you that experience that feels like what you really expect. Now, again, I, as I've sort of mentioned a few times this is this is a personal preference for me i like this experience because cracks and, and modifications have have can, can break games in subtle ways at least older cracks you know these days um 
the crews of like nostalgia actually do it a far more respect respectful job and you get an experience that's actually improved um actually some of that's actually something else i should talk about so you know david's been not magic is loading another minute or so we'll have it up and you can sort of see how this whole thing comes together it's it's a lovely experience And yeah, maybe I'll do a quick jump. And there we are. One of the things that I, I should neglect to mention is one of the really cool feature upgrades for the Ultimate 2 Plus over the Ultimate 2 is an inbuilt speaker. Um, for the Ultimate 2, there was a headphone jack that you could plug a set of speakers into. I can't remember if it was headphone or line level audio out. But you could plug it in, and whilst it was used for seat emulation, you could also get drive sounds. Um, the Ultimate 2 Plus has the speaker built in, which for me, I actually have a fairly compressed setup. Um, where I have my 64 set up. So it means that I get the, the disc activity. But anyway, David's Midnight Magic is up. So you can sort of see that that experience. You get it, you load, you've got waiting. And I know some people don't like that. Um, the other big one, of course, is cartridges. So let's go to my carts directory. You know, and we can do stuff like... Because always Wizard of War. So we run the cartridge. I think flashing... Oh, I don't can't remember 100% of what that's used for. But anyway, run cart. We've reset. Hey, it's Wizard of War. And it's just... You get this experience where a lot of the pain, you know, you don't need to have, like, a, a fast load installed or whatever, or install Jiffy DOS. Um, actually, that's another advanced feature. You can actually... You can actually, much like you can for an Easy Flash 3, you can actually do a soft override of the kernel. So, uh, let's go through this. Yeah, Wizard of War. Now, when you're running cartridge games, one thing you need to know is you hit F5, and you've got this fancy menu that lets you um, create disk images, control a printer. That's another advanced feature. You can actually emulate a printer attached to the serial bus. So, reboot C64, because you swap the cartridge yet. And you can see we're back here. We've got the retro replay, which actually, let's talk about that. So, if we go C64 and cartridge settings, that is uh, F2, so shift F1. By default, you've got um, the retro replay. You can select, you've got all of those. You've got the final cartridge, three action replays, super snapshot, um, Epic's fast loader, the power cartridge. So you've got custom cartridges. You've even like load your own if you want to develop your own. And those are all properly supported. So you get um, freeze and reset support built in there. I kind of like the retro replay, so there. You've got your alternate kernel which means that you can go buy uh, the Jiffy DOS ROM set, put it on the Ultimate, and not worry about actually opening your C64, pulling the ROM out, much like you can with the Easy Flash 3. RAM expansion. Um, the RAM expansion unit was a cartridge that was really popular in the States, mainly for, like, GEOS. You plugged in the back, it gave you... Um, for the 64, it was officially a 256K expansion. There was a 128 and a 512 that was made for the C128. They worked on the 64... Um, but you can actually read up to 16 meg. One of the big advantages of that is you can run, um, there are little movie demos that load straight to the RAU. There are things like, um, actually there are things like, um, a lot of cracks by nostalgia actually could preload the game contents into the RAU. So having that means that once you do the initial load, these games just pull data out of memory. Um, but anyway, a lot of these, other things like that. Yeah, you can set when you do the DMA load, you can mimic which drive. Um, of course, drive eight. Let's go back to some more options. So you've got you've got a real-time clock that's saved in there, um, useful for file mods. Audio output. So by default, we've got the built-in speaker is emulating attached to drive A sound. You can then have um, you can then output oh you can have the the SID. So you could basically have fake stereo SID in there. Um, what else is there? You've got UI, colors, things like that. You've got um, your drive A settings. So by default, um, I have it emulating a single 1541.2 is device eight. And then I have device nine, which I'll use mainly when I want to just, you know, fill around with something like Maverick and copy images over. Um, let's keep going. So let's pick, let's pick something. Ocean games. Okay. So if we go to Ocean's directory, 
we do the same thing. We've just run the cart, the 64 resets, and now we're loading, we've just loaded up Shadow of the Beast. And it's so, this is so much more convenient than, you know, having to deal with disc images. And sure, you'll miss out on cheats or trainers if you want those, but it's Shadow of the Beast. Again, if you wanted to watch my video on this, I have that elsewhere on the channel. You can, you can check that out. Um, let's reboot the 64 again. Uh, let's go back to my notes. Yeah, so what, I mean, one of the big things of, you know, why would you want the ultimate? I mean, the price is like, it's 123 euro for the base unit. It's another like 10 or oh, 13 euro um, to get the tape interface. It's optional. If you don't care about tap files, then you don't need it. Um, it runs perfectly fine without it. Um, and I know for me when I ordered, so I've got a revision A Ultimate 2 Plus. There is one flaw with it that the later reviews don't have, which is that there's a bit of background audio. Um, I had to do a fair bit of post-processing editing to get rid of that. Um, what else is there? What else can I talk about? I mean, if we go reset. Um, let's run, so for example, we can run the Mixi disc. And this is sort of the big thing. So let's go mountain run. We reset. We're going to load the the, the reset 9.5 disk loader. Uh, now this is the thing, of course. So I was talking about some of those um, those th those the big thing of you know working around the slow drive speed is these software turbo loaders, and that also means IRQ loaders, which are loaders that can run while the computer is doing things. So we just booted the reset menu up. Uh, let's have a look. What do we got here? Really nice disc menu we got for reset. So uh, let's like this is the original version of Bear, not the uh, the retail one, which is the one I never actually cover that because I covered the original version. But yeah, now it's it's booting up. We've got the Bear loading picture, and you can see the little progress bar. And this this kind of stuff, you know, this lets you run all all the output of the demo scene. This lets you run games like Slipstream. This lets you run all these games that push the boundaries of the machine. Um, the great example is, if you haven't already checked it out, I'm waiting for my physical copy to arrive, but Planet Golf. Um, actually, let's finish loading Bear. We'll load Planet Golf up. Because Planet Golf has an amazing intro sequence and actually does a lot of things like background load levels. So you it, the, the transition between levels is seamless. And this is stuff that you can't do on an SD to IEC or similar device. Because those are basically high-level devices that listen to the sort of the basic signals on the serial bus. They don't emulate the computer. The 5041 is essentially a computer. Um, and they don't emulate that, that level of logic. And so you can't see what's actually, you know, you can't run custom code there, which is why the copy protected disks fail, which is why all these software speeders fail outside of the very, very small selection. Um, so, well, bear is loading. It's, Taking them, oh, there we go. Bear is loaded. And this is, of course, the original version of Bear as I, as I did review because I didn't actually do a video on the, um, I only did the unboxing of the physical copy. I didn't do the, um, didn't actually check that version out. But that's the sort of experience you get. You get that, that nice again. So let's go. Discs P Planet Golf. All right, so let's go. We'll mount disc two because we have to run this very specific. Reset, uh, normal reset. So we load, we load the B side. And I plan to do a proper video on Planet Golf in the near future. Like I said, wait for my physical copy to arrive because it's actually got an Ultimate Edition release. So let's watch the story. And this, this is just my mind. This is the kind of thing that you know comes out of the demo scene. Um, and it's just so. It's video. Before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. In 1969, a group of astronauts changed the world. Now this speech and video, it's mind blowing, mind blowingly awesome. And this is stuff you just could not do with an SD to ISC. And for me, I think that 
you know, and I think that sort of subs up to a bigger, a bigger thing for me. Um, you know, we, we live in an age where we've got this technology available to enjoy these games. And I think it's amazing that you could run so many games out of the library on one little device. You know, I th I'd mess around with flashcards and stuff in the past. It's like, imagine if someone did one for the 64 to let you load discs, tapes, cartridges, and it exists, and it's here, and it's magnificent. Um, you, you just don't get that kind of experience. Um, I think that's great that I can run just about any game. The only, the only limitations are um, there's some copy protected schemes that fail for original discs. Um, Rapid Lock is the big one, which is a bit annoying. There are some games that don't work there. Um, but at the end of the stage, this is really um, an amazing bit of technology. For me, it worked out to order it complete. It was 220 Australian dollars, which to me was a deal. To me, I think that's a fair price. But Again, I use the 64 heavily, and I don't have space to easily go and find my physical discs and tapes. And got to acknowledge that that they are have a limited lifespan. It's really convenient to have it all in one space on my desk. And that user interface alone is just ma is magnificent. Is honestly the Ultimate UI is by far the best thing I've ever used in a retro computer. Um, you know, very simple joystick navigation, type ahead navigation. Um, you can use F1, F7 to page a screen at a time. And you get long file names. You don't, you're not just limited to eight characters like you get with other devices. It makes the experience far more enjoyable for me because you can really enjoy using these games, running them and working with them in such a way that, honestly, um, the experience is well worth it. For me, the, the Ultimate's a no-brainer. Um, if you don't have one at all and you've got the money for it, put it aside and grab it. You you do have to wait because they're, you know, this is this is one person's manufacturing. Um, Gideon does an amazing job with it all. You've got to wait for batches. Um, you have the 1541 Ultimate website. You can sign up, put an order in. You can get the cartridge, of course, in red, black, white, or transparent. So if you got one of those... Um, transparent C64C cases. Hey, cartridge matches with it. Um, I went for red because it's faster. <coughs> Actually, because my Ultimate 2 was black and I wanted to differentiate them color-wise. Even though, as a package, the Ultimate 2 Plus cartridge is far, designed far more differently. It's um, a little bulkier. The original Ultimate 2 was essentially the size of a 64 cut with a little bulk for the disc cable. This is a little thicker, but it's got so much more in there. Um, setting up is pretty easy. You just plug the cartridge into the expansion port, you plug the disc and tape cables to their respective uh, interfaces. If you want to use the tape, in, well, for the tape module, you have a little little board that plugs into the data set port. You just run the cable from the ultimate to that. There's a port on the cartridge side. Um, just grab a USB thumb drive, format it to FAT32, set it up how you want, copy your, your programs on it, stick it in, power it up, and you're all go. The ultimate is an essential, essential piece of hardware. It's really well put together. It's really nice to use. It's powerful. It's elegant. It's by far the best interface I've ever seen on a retro computer. And it's really the best thing I think I've ever bought. Out of all the retro computers I have, out of all the software, all the hardware for running SD cards of flash storage, it's just that it really is the ultimate package. Um, I think, like, if you... You might say, but Nessie IC is cheaper. It is. But you're probably going to have to buy a, an Easy Flash or something to go along with it, or, or install Jiffy DOS, and those will add up. Um, you know, then you've got to risk pulling the kernel ROMs out and swapping that over and doing what, and it gets messy. And then if you want tapes, well, you've got to deal with. I don't even know. I know there's actually I don't know what other solutions there are for running tap files. Like there are there are ones that you know you can hook them up to your phone, but then if you're like me and use an iPhone you get screwed over by the headphone jack. Uh, I really like that move. And there are other, there aren't solutions out there that do, that put it all together in such a simple, elegant package. So if you have the money, and if you're serious about your CD4, the Ultimate should absolutely be on your shopping list. And that brings to the last video for CD4 Month in 2017. Um, 
a little different to do some non-game reviews, to do some hardware, do some collection wandering. Um, and I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. If Hopefully, I've got you on board to kick it. Get an Ultimate if you don't already have one. And if you already do, you're already happy Ultimate 2 owner, there's a bunch of updates that are in Firmware 3 that you'll get, um, even though it's the older hardware. It's a hard decision about doing the upgrade. For me, uh, the speaker was really why I wanted it, um, having that internal speaker because of my desk space. For other people, that's probably not as much of a problem, and I can understand it if you're happy with your Ultimate 2. As always, new videos come out Friday. Do hit the subscribe button to catch the channel as they go. Also, hit the little bell for the notification things. And of course, thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you all next time.